homeowners are becoming more educated than ever. We're seeing more folks like you doing your homework. Maybe that's how you found this video. And because of that, better informed homeowners are making better decisions in the long run, right? So things that just worked years ago, things that you would just get by with, but even though it affected your utility bills or your comfort levels, even though it worked, homeowners are now wising up to a lot of that stuff. And because of that, a lot of guys in our trade are having to step up their game a little bit. In this video, I want to talk about some of the calculations that homeowners are wanting to get done to their homes or they should want to get done to their homes. If you're watching this video and you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, we're going to dive into three main calculations that I think every home should have done before a heating and air system is installed. And you might say, well, Josh, you know, I'm just replacing a system. Does this apply to me? And I think the answer is yes. The reason is for years, these calculations were overlooked. Even during new construction today, there are guys overlooking these calculations. I tell folks all the time when we help them on our website, newhvacguide.com, even if you've got to pay for it, it might be worth getting these calculations done so you know things are right. That's what these calculations are all about knowing that it's right, not throwing mud on the wall and saying, oh, well, it works. You know, it must be right. It works. No, knowing for a fact that you've gotten it dialed in perfectly, that it's sized properly, you're not going to have humidity issues or comfort issues, all those things and so on. And I'll even go one step further and say that these calculations are more important than ever because of the way we're building houses today. Things are getting tighter. Houses don't breathe like they used to. Folks that never had ventilation, for example, now require it. You've got to have it or you're going to be breathing in all kinds of things that you shouldn't. But of course, that's a whole nother topic for another video. That said, there are probably hundreds of calculations out there. You can get calculations done on building envelope and ventilation and all kinds of humidity and positive and negative pressures and all these different things you can get done. And they're all good, right? They all serve their purpose. But in this video, I want to go over three main calculations that will help you make sure that the HVAC equipment that you're you're about to spend tons of money on is sized properly, installed properly, and you have selected the best thing for your home. So let's dive into it. There are three calculations. The first one is called a manual J calculation. A lot of guys in our industry will call it a load calculation. And the reason this is important, a lot of folks will think, well, isn't bigger better? If I install a really big air conditioner, then it will run, reach temperature, shut off, and I'll save tons of energy. The problem with that is not to get too technical and dew point and all these different things. The problem with that is the system actually doesn't run long enough to remove enough humidity from the air, and it creates a whole nother set of issues. You've cooled the space actually too fast. So there is a such thing as undersizing the equipment because it just simply can't keep up, right? The sensible load capacity of that system, it just simply doesn't have enough oomph to reach temperature in your home, right? It can be undersized, but it can also be oversized to where it runs too quickly, it shuts off, and it didn't do its job. It didn't actually condition the air and keep you comfortable and it creates a whole nother set of issues. And so dialing that in perfectly, most times guys are sizing this if they're doing it properly for extreme temperatures. So if you live in an area that reaches this maximum temperature, we're gonna set that equipment up to where it reaches this temperature kind of thing. And I'm not gonna get into all of what those temperatures are and things because I've heard different thought processes and arguments on that. Ultimately, the thought is in a perfect world that on an extremely hot day that that system is gonna run longer. And as you get milder days, you need to maximize that sizing. So that way it still does what it needs to do without creating those issues we talked about. A lot of guys today are thinking, oh, well, I can just install an inverter system. I'll oversize that and it'll ramp down. And they don't realize that that's not exactly how that works. Because it has the ability to ramp down, it might be a little more forgiving than a single stage system. However, you can still have issues if you're not sizing 
properly. So make sure you're getting a load calculation done. Make sure you've got a contractor that's doing the manual J calculation. Even if you've got to pay for it in the long run, it's probably worth it. Next, let's talk about a manual D calculation. And so you've decided what size that system needs to be. You've narrowed it down and now you're looking at installing the system. You've got a pro in there and they're going to install the ductwork. And this calculation is overlooked more than probably load calculations when it comes to rule of thumbs that a lot of guys use in our industry. You can have a perfectly sized system, but if that ductwork is not installed properly, you can have a whole array of issues. In fact, aside from the questions I get on brands and things like that, I probably get more questions on my YouTube channel about one room being hot or cold or certain parts of the house not heating and cooling like it should, all because in most cases, we're talking about ductwork issues. And because we've advanced in technology here, we used to have these old single stage furnaces with these big old motors on them and that would push all kinds of air through there. We didn't care about how much energy it used. You know, we were just pushing a lot of air through a small hole, right? But because we've got all these newer inverter type systems and because we've got zoning systems that can be quite complicated in themselves, there are guys that almost kind of specialize in this now, right? They really know what they're doing. They can dial in a duct system. They not only maximize comfort and efficiency, but even noise. Like if guys that really know what they're doing with this can install a ductwork system where the HVAC system is just ultimately optimized, you could take a, a good system and make it a great system just because of the manual D and the installation of the ductwork. And then finally, the third calculation that I think is important is overlooked way too much in our industry is a manual S calculation. And what this calculation does is it ultimately helps you decide what equipment works best for that application. It takes all kinds of things into account. It takes where you live. It takes what type of system you're installing. And ultimately it takes sizing into account as well. A lot of folks don't realize they three ton system is not always equal to a three ton system. Looking up the ratings on that system and understanding what works best for this application might not be the best for this application. There are ducted and ductless systems. There are inverters and non-inverters. There's water to air type systems. There's all kinds of systems out there and deciding what works best for that home is sometimes the big deciding factor on not only how comfortable you are and how well that system operates in the long run, but ultimately how efficient that system is as well. How well does it get the job done? And that's why you hear some guys say in our industry, I was able to put a lesser efficient system in there to maximize comfort and still maximize the energy efficiency. So again, the three calculations we're looking at are load calculation, manual J, ductwork, which is manual D, and then the selection of the system, which is manual S. If you find a contractor that is doing things right, that is doing these calculations in the long run, I think your money will be better spent. I think you'll make a better decision. You'll make a better purchase. They may not be the cheap guy, but ultimately you're going to be happy for years to come in the grand scheme of things. So what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them down in the comment section below. Do you have somebody doing these calculations or somebody that's kind of using rule of thumb and they're not doing things properly. Love to hear about that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about reasons you might want to wait before you make that big purchase. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.